Honorable Ulama Ikram, respected brothers and elders, with the ongoing crisis in the Middle East, and perhaps not only the Muslims' focus, but global flow focus is at this time in, in, in uh, uh, Israel and Palestine, and in Palestine in particular, the Janine refugee camp, where many of our brothers and sisters have become the victims of the brutality of the enemies of Islam. Whenever this particular topic is debated or discussed, then it always boils down to a debate between Islam and Judaism. Therefore, I thought it necessary that we understand what stand does the Quran take and what role does the Quran explain with regards to the people of the book. In the recent decades, Islam has been widely criticized for speaking ill of the people of the book. I read an article recently that after the September 11 attacks, because the you know, the, the anxiety or the curiosity of people was aroused with regards to Islam. So many Qurans were circulating in the United States. But for some reason or the other, many people have now withdrawn those Qurans, claiming that Islam is speaking ill of the people of the book. We must understand that Islam, with great justice, just as Islam has identified, and we will substantiate what we say. And it is important that we understand this. Just as Islam has identified and highlighted the wrongs, the distortions, the corruption amongst the nations that preceded us, Islam has not left praising, boasting, bragging, and speaking positive of those amongst the people of the book, be it the Jews, be it the Christians, who seen the truth, acknowledged the truth, admitted the truth, and accepted the truth. Not one or two, but several verses in the Qur'an boasts and brags about those people. And Allah says, for such people will be a double reward, a manifold reward. Those who brought Iman on their Prophet, and then after that, seen the coming of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then accepted Islam at the hands of Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam, for them is double fold reward. Of course, the unfortunate part, which I want to focus on here is, is to understand, the, the irony of the whole thing is that many a times when those among the very Yahud stood up with the truth, like there are some people in this time and age in the likes of Yuri Davis and others, who when they stood up with the truth and identified the wrong of their own people, they were shunned from society. And this is what the Quran speaks about. Not denying the good of those that accept it. I give you a typical example in Muslim Sharif second volume under the Manatib of Abdullah ibn Salam. Abdullah ibn Salam was not any ordinary Muslim, he was a Jewish rabbi. He had been divine and, and Allah had, had, had inspired him with the knowledge of the books, the Torah, the Injil, etc. We know very well that every divine scripture that came prophesied the coming of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So every prophet was told, in fact as you and I know we were assembled in the land of souls. And then Allah asked, am I not your Lord? And everyone in one breath said, Bala, oh Allah definitely you are our Lord. What was the pledge that was taken from the prophets? It could not be that Allah is going to ask them, am I not your Lord? They are going to come in the world to identify Allah. So there's no, there's no chance of them forgetting who they Allah is. The pledge that Allah had taken from all the prophets was, وَإِذْ أَقَذَ اللَّهُ مِيثَاقَ النَّبِيِّينَ لَمَا آتَيْتُكُمْ مِنْ كِتَابٍ وَحِكْمَةٍ ثُمَّ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مُصَدِّقٌ لِمَا مَعَكُمْ لَتُؤْمِنُنَّ بِهِ وَلَتَنْصُرُنَّ قال أأقررتم وأخذتم على ذلكم إصري قالوا أقررنا قال فاشهدوا وأنا معكم من الشاهدين الله يتيك إن this from the galaxy of Nabi Alayhi Musallat Wasallam that you will go in your time and in your era with the kitab that I favor you with and you will guide your people in the respective era however in the time in which you will be preaching be it Musa Alayhi Salam Moses be it Isa Alayhi Salam Jesus be it Dawud Alayhi Salam be it any or every prophet the time and the era in which you will be propagating your message, if in that era my Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa comes, then you will have to give up your shariat, and you will have to accept his shariat, and you will have to follow his teachings, and naturally when you will have to follow it, what it will follow your nation. This was the pledge that Allah had taken from all the Nabi alayhi salatu wa Furthermore, it is our belief which is of vital importance that we understand, that every kitab that was revealed spoke about the coming of Nabi alayhi salatu wa Every scripture, every kitab, every divine book had said that you bring iman. Every, every nation's kalima was different. La ilaha illallah Musa kalimullah. La ilaha illallah Nuh najiyullah. La ilaha illallah Adam safiyullah. They read the kalima, accepting that that Nabi was the prophet of the time. 
However, it was told to them, you have accepted Iman on me. My religion remains for a period of time. My currency is to change. From Musa, it went on to Isa. After Isa, the currency changed onto the currency of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa We do not deny for a moment that those were currencies that existed in the world. But after the change of currency, you have to come with the current currency to buy or purchase any article or any item. Yes, in that time, in the era of Musa, the religion you had, except in Musa as the greatest man, as the Nabi of Allah, as the, as the, by emulating him, salvation and success, uh, you will be successful in both the worlds. If you went with that life, that was the currency of the time, it would purchase you salvation. However, at the turning of the coming of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa the currency of the various prophets terminated, and the final currency has been introduced, which remains and will not change by, by the changing of time or seasons or era, and will remain till the time of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa the Yahud and the Jews were awaiting the promised person. The Kitab spoke about it and the, the, they acknowledge and they admit. In fact, many of the Yahud, many, many years prior to the birth of Nabi alayhi salam, when traveling with the king of Yemen by the name of Tubba, when they came to Medina, and brothers, as I will mention, these are facts that can be discussed with them openly. Those that are honest among them will admit, and I will substantiate this. When they came to Medina, in the light of the divine scriptures that they read, and they seen the surroundings of Medina, they said, this is the place where that promised man will migrate. They took permission from the king that we will accompany you. If you permit us, we want to base ourselves here and establish a place for us here. You resume your journey, but this is the place. 400 scholars, Yehudi, Jewish scholars, who were, with the, were under the leadership of this king. He permitted them and every one of them stayed there and they built a house for themselves that we will stay here and in fact few couplets were also saying that if Allah shows us that day where the final prophet will come then we will stand by him we will defend his deen and we will be the first to accept his, his religion and as they passed away they gave this advice that this house I have built if you happen to see the error where the final prophet comes then tell him that we came here and we based here in the anticipation of his coming. That is why some scholars say that house in which Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam came, that was the house of, uh, uh, when Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wasalam came to Medina Munawwara and he stationed his house, every sahabi, uh, he stationed himself, every sahabi was desirous that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasalam become my guest and I become the host. Who wouldn't want that? Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said, no, wait, this camel has been ordered by Allah. And then this honor came in the particular of, in, in, in the favor of one Sahabi. Some scholars say that although at that time this Sahabi was the owner of the house, but if you trace the history of this house, then this was that house which was built by the Jewish scholars many, many years ago in the anticipation of Nabi alayhi salam and was prepared exclusively for Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So they were so familiar that the Quran says, يَعْرِفُونَهُ كَمَا يَعْرِفُونَ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ the Jews knew Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam just as they know and recognize and identify their own sons. Such or so explicit and manifest and vivid was the description of Nabi Karim sallallahu in the Torah. When they seen Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the description of the Torah matched the features and the personality of Nabi alayhi salam, min wa'an hundred percent. However, here came the contentious issue. And what does the Quran say? Many of them now shifted for the simple reason, حَسَدًا مِنْ عِنْدِ أَنفُسِهِمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الْحَقِ That suddenly, prophethood has been now transferred from the offspring and the descendants of Bani Israel into Bani Ismail. The Quran says at this juncture, out of jealousy, they deviated. And despite accepting and knowing that this is that final prophet, but because... Like brothers, we know, when a person has jealousy for anyone, he can never admit the good of that person. He will only find flaws and criticism and faults in that person. Why? Because his heart hates that person. And on what grounds that this prophet has come from the Arab lineage and he has not come from amongst Bani Israel. Now, we find that the Quran has discussed this. But let us highlight that those who came with the truth, the likes of Abdullah bin Salam radiallahu anhu. As I mentioned, he was a Jewish scholar. When Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood up with Nabuwat, he came to Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this was nothing easy, he was a rabbi, he was a leader, he had a significant role in society. But he had understood that the Quran said 
that when Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam comes, now you must accept his deen. He came to Nabi Akram sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and in the presence of Nabi alaihi salam, he acknowledged and he testified and he admitted. In fact, the hadith is very beautiful. Nabi alaihi salam was sitting with his sahaba, and he said, "At'imu al-ta'am and feed feed the poor, wa wasallu al-arham and join ties, wa sallu bil-layl wa nasu niyam." and perform namaz in the dead of night when the creation is sleeping. He says, when I walked into the gathering and I heard these words, a Jewish scholar who was a rabbi, he says, when I heard this, I was convinced this is the man. I came there, I put my hands there and I accepted kalima la ilaha illallah. Muslim Sharif second volume. Now this is the point and this is what the Quran identifies. There were those good, but the others. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam took him inside the house. And then another delegation of Jews came. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam asked him, okay, tell me, What's your opinion of Abdullah bin Salam? How do you view the man Abdullah bin Salam? They said, Khayruna wa binu Khayrina. He is the best, the most noble, the most pious. Nabi Sallallahu said, and if I go on to say that he has accepted Islam, they said, Sharruna wa binu Sharrina. Then he is the most evil man we've ever seen. The words of Muslim Sharif. Now this is what the Quran highlights. He comes out. And he says, oh fools, I am your leader and this kitab is telling us this is the man. One minute ago, he is the best, the most noblest, the most pious. And if I tell you he is a Muslim, sharruna, wabinu sharrina, the most evil coming from the most evil, evil progeny. The Quran praised Abdullah ibn salam in such ways, brothers, that wallah you and I cannot understand. The very people of the book. Now what happened here, the point that I'm discussing, when he stood up and he spoke about the truth, then immediately what they said, he is not from amongst us. Now isn't that the situation which we are facing? When never mind us. That is why wherever Allah Ta'ala spoke about the proof of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah told them, فَاسْأَلُوا أَنْهَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ My Nabi is saying he is a prophet, you don't accept him. I am telling you as the, 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 the people of the book, be it the Jews and the Christians, those amongst you who are the learned scholars and, and, and are governing and are guiding with justice, go and ask them and see what they got to tell you about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Leave me. My Nabi's evidence you don't want to accept. Go and take the evidence of your own people. But what has happened whenever they stood up with the truth, then if he is not a Zionist Yahud, he is not a Yahud. If he stands up and he speaks anti-Zionism, then he is out of the circle. He doesn't belong to us. If he read the kalima, he is the worst from the worst. If he doesn't read the kalima, he is the best from amongst the best. If he talks Zionism, he is amongst us. If he doesn't talk Zionism, he is not from amongst us. The Quran praised them so much. وَمِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ مَنْ إِنْ تَأَمَنْهُ بِقِنْطَارٍ يُؤَدِّهِ إِلَيْكِ They are some of the Jews. Allah says, if you have to give them an entire treasure of gold, and you ask them, please keep this for me, يُؤَدِّهِ إِلَيْكِ the time you want it, they will come and give it to you in the correct way. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ إِنْ تَأْمَنْهُ بِدِينَارِ But the majority are those that if you give them one ran also, you'll have to beg for it and then also you'll be lucky if you'll get it. لَكِنِ الرَّاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ مِنْهُمْ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ يُؤْمِنُونَ These verses were revealed in the likes of Azad Abdullah bin Salam رضي الله عنه. That Allah says these are those that accepted the truth. I give you another example. It is, an, it is imperative that we understand. Islam has not come to criticize. But this was the truth that only could be revealed by a revelation. So, in their nature, they were not ready to accept truth. Study the Quran. What did they say? نَحْنُ أَبْنَاءُ اللَّهِ وَأَحِبَّاءُ We are the people of God. This is the words of the Quran. أَبْنَاءُ اللَّهِ We are the sons of Allah. أَحِبَّاءُ We are the beloveds of Allah. Allah said, فَلِمَا يُعَذِّبُكُمْ بِذُنُوبِكُمْ If you are Allah's son, then why is Allah punishing you so much? Why are you going through such disgrace and humiliation? بَلْ أَنْتُمْ بَشَرٌ مِّمَّنْ خَلَقْ Musa alayhi salatu was salam with Bani Israel were told to enter into a locality. Enter India. What did Bani Israel tell Musa alayhi salam? اِذْهَبْ أَنْتَ وَرَبُّكَ فَقَاتِلَا إِنَّا هَا هُنَا قَاعِدُونَ O Musa, you and your Allah go fight. We sit in here. When you're victorious, you come back, we join you. The Quran spoke about this. Let's speak about the Christians, the people of the book. What did the Quran say about them? Falsely people accuse Islam. A delegation from a place called Najran came to Nabi alayhi salam to debate the, the concept of Trinity. 
So they came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they said, what's your opinion about Isa alayhi salatu was salam? said, we accept him as the Nabi of Allah and he was born like the Quran testifies with a mother with no father from the Virgin Mary. They debated and they said, no, Isa is the son of Allah. The Ayat al-Karima I recited in the beginning. وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ عُزَيْرٌ إِبْنُ اللَّهِ وَقَالَتِ النَّصَارَ الْمَسِيحُ إِبْنُ اللَّهِ The Yahud said that Uzair is the son of Allah. Of course, there are many denominations amongst them. So, I don't know if this group still remains among them with this concept. The scholars of Tafsir say that it doesn't look like this. This particular sect or group exists. وَقَالَتِ النَّصَارَ الْمَسِيحُ إِبْنُ اللَّهِ and the people of the book from amongst the Christians, what did they say? They said that Isa is the son of Allah. Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained to them that look here, Allah has no son. Lam sahiba wala walada. Allah has no wife, Allah has no child. This is our belief. After much debate, the Christians were not ready to accept the verdict of Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam. And it was finally decided that tomorrow, Nad'u abana'ana wa abana'akum wa nisa'ana wa nisa'akum. وَأَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ ثُمَّ نَبْتَهِلْ فَنَجْعَلْ لَعْنَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَاذِبِينَ We are speaking those among them and we are seeing them coming out. But you see, brothers, many people feel that the right time now is to expose them. When their own people expose them, they don't listen. When you will expose them, how they will listen? When those amongst them expose their wrong, they were not ready to accept. The focus should be what is our duty? Whether Allah destroys or not, that remains the task of Allah. What is our obligation? Nabi alayhi salam told them, and this concept is referred to as the concept of mubahala. That tomorrow you come with your wives, your children, your family. I come with my wife, my children, my family. You stand that side, I stand this side. Jointly, because we can't come to a compromise. I'm telling you, Isa alayhi salam. In fact, the Quran quotes the statement of Isa telling the very Christians, Ya Bani Israel, O Rabbi wa Rabbakum. Oh, the children of Israel, worship one Allah. He is my Lord and your Lord. He himself says this, but they say, No, you've been humble, you are Allah. So what happened? The next day they come. This delegation. And the Quran then praises them afterwards. The king of Abyssinia, Nigas. When the Muslims came and took shelter there, then the kuffar came and they said, you know, these people have taken shelter in your land and they are so evil and this is their condition. The sahaba were, were summoned in the court of, of, of Nigas. And then Jafar radiallahu anhu stood up and he said, Ayyuhal hey, Malik, kunna qawman ahla jahiliyya, na'budul asnam, na'akul al-mayta, naqta'ul arham, nusi'ul jiwar, kunna ala dhalik, hatta ba'athallahu ilayna rasoolahu, na'rifu nasabahu wa sidqahu wa amanatahu. We were in Mecca. We were the most evil people, downtrodden people. We used to fight and kill and massacre for petty things. Allah said, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam amongst us. We accepted his creed. We followed him. Our nation has opposed us. We have come to take shelter in your land. He says, go, you can reside in peace. The next day they said, no. The kuffar were disappointed that the king did not get rid of them. So he said, what we'll do, we'll go and discuss the sensitive issue of the birth of Isa. And this is how we will upset the king against the Muslims. So the next day another delegation came and he said, King, your majesty, your honor, do you know these Muslims that have taken shelter in your land? Do you know what nasty remarks they make about Isa and the birth of Isa and the mother of Isa Mary and the Virgin Mary? Do you know what is their belief? Go and call them immediately. He was very upset because this was now interfering with his belief. Once again the Jamaat was, was called in the presence of, of this king. So again the Sahabi stood up. First question asked, what is your belief? Define your belief with regards to Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. So he stood up and he said, we believe that he was created by the will of Allah, un, unlike normal, by the, the, the meeting of husband and wife, but miraculously through the Virgin Mary, Allah sent the angel Jibreel alayhi salam and blew on her chest. She instantly conceived and Isa alayhi salatu wasalam was born. We accept him as a Nabi of Allah. We accept him as the Prophet of Allah. We accept him as the chosen and, and selected servant of Allah. However, he remains the, crea the creation of Allah and at no stage does he become the creator. When the king heard this, he said, but Isa said nothing more than this. This is the very message that Isa said. Those people were embarrassed, ashamed and dared to leave. He said, now I will not entertain any man's word against you. I am convinced they hate you, you have the truth and I have accepted your Islam and I am with you. The Quran revealed the verse, praising this Christian. When he died, Allahu Akbar, when he died in Habasha, when he died in Abyssinia, hundreds and thousands of kilometers away from Mecca in Medina, Nabi alayhi salam was informed in the holy lands of Mecca that this man has died. 
The ulama say, standing in Mecca, Nabi al Islam made self, and he said, we are performing the janazah of that Christian king who accepted Islam. So this is the message of the Quran for the people of the book. Accept it and you are our brothers. The Ayat al I recited in the beginning, Qul ya ahl al-kitab, oh the people of the Bayt, ta'alo, come, come here, come here, we stand together. Kal ila kalimatin sawa, we come to one word, one compromise. What is it? Sawa'am baynana wa baynakum Allah na'buda illa Allah That we worship none other than Allah Wala nushrika bihi shay'a We do not ascribe partners with Allah But brothers, are they ready to accept it? They shun those that stood up among them Where are they going to embrace us? Where are they going to embrace us? Abdullah bin Salam Sharruna wa ibn Sharrina immediately Allah reveal Allah has opened the seven Jews of the Quran praising this very same man Wa idha sami'u ma unzila ila rasul Tara a'yunahum tafidhu min ad-dam'i mimma arafu min al-haq You will find amongst the people of the book the Jews and the Christians when the verses of the Quran are recited because of the Jafar stood up and he read surah verses of, of, of surah Maryam and then the king started crying when he heard the verses of the Quran Allah says you will find people from among the Jews and the Christians when the light of Islam comes before them you will find them initially crying and then tearing and then uncontrollably they start sobbing who? not the condition of Sahaba Allah is speaking the condition of Christians who accepted Islam when the truth came before them and what did they say? رَبَّنَا آمَنَّا فَاكْتُبْنَا مَعَ الشَّاهِدِينَ Oh Allah, we have accepted it. Now record us among the believers. I conclude with this incident. Nabi alayhi salam in Mecca performed the janazah namaz of that man. So it is very easy to take those verses where the Quran condemns the people of the book because of their wrong. A nation that could not accept the truth when those among them stood up. So naturally anybody else raising those slogans is going to fall on deaf ears. This delegation came the next day to debate the concept of Trinity. I haven't got time, brothers, you know how much Allah has discussed this in the Quran. But unfortunately, we are ignorant with regards to, to the basic injunctions of Quran and Hadith. How much do we know what does the Quran say about it? Allah says, if you argue with a Jew or a Christian, and he says, but this is from Torah and this is from Injil. How do you view this entire situation? وَلَا تُجَادِلُوا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ وَقُولُوا آمَنَّا بِالَّذِي أُنزِلَ إِلَيْنَا وَأُنزِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ Tell him, come, take out the original scripture, that which has not been distorted. You take out that original, original scripture, and I put the Qur'an together, and then you will find how it's so common amongst itself, and I will show you places where your scripture has spoken about my Qur'an. These people, the next day when they came, the Mufassirin have drawn this picture. Nabi alayhi salam walking. In his one hand is his one grandson, Hazrat Hassan radiallahu anhu. Hussein radiallahu anhu walking, Nabi alayhi salam held him with his Mubarak finger. Behind is Fatima radiallahu anha. Can you imagine how all striking this personalities must have been? When if you have to take any one of them, they all see, one is the Nabi of Allah. Lana shamsu walil afaqi shamsu. Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha says, one is my son, that is my Nabi. And one is the sun that brightens the world. Wa shamsi khayrun min shamsi sama. But my son, that is in my house, that is my Nabi, is better than the sun in the skies. Why? فَإِنَّ الشَّمْسَ تَطْلَعُ بَعْدَ فَجْرٍ وَشَمْسِ طَالِعٌ بَعْدَ الْعِشَى That sun brightens half the world, other half in darkness. My Nabi radiates light 24 hours. Nabi alayhi salam walking, listen to this. The delegation of Christians come in to fight and argue the concept of Trinity. Nabi alayhi salam walking. In his hand is Hassan and in the other hand is Hussein. Sayyida shabaab ahli al-jannah. The leaders of the youth of Jannat. Nabi alayhi salam told Hassan, Asbahta, Asbahta khalqi wa khuluqi. Hassan, you resemble my appearance also and my character also. Hussein in one hand, Hassan in one hand. Fatima at the back. Kafa biki sharafan. Kafa biki sharafan. An takuni sayyidata nisai ahlil jannah. Oh my daughter Fatima, it is enough for me. It is enough honor for you. My Allah has confirmed you will be the queen of the woman of Jannat. As this Christian delegation was coming, one of the Christians' priests, their sight fell on Nabi alayhi salam and his daughter and his children and they looked at this and he paused. He said, oh my people, Wallah, I don't know much of Christianity, but I see some light in this man. If he is going to do mubahala, that is we both combinedly curse the wrong party. What is Mubahala? We both get together. I'm saying Isa is, is the servant of Allah, the Nabi of Allah. You are saying Isa alayhi salam is the son of Allah. We jointly say 
Come we combine forces, you from your side, me from my side. Nadu abana ana wa abana akum, wanisa ana wanisa akum, you, your daughter, your children, me, my daughter, my children. We stand and we curse. Oh, oh Allah, whoever is uttering the false, then you curse them, destroy them. When this priest looked at this all striking personality, we want these people to stand up in the world. Where are they? They said, really this looks like divine people. I promise you, if he is going to curse, the words that come in the revive, they won't remain a Christian on this earth till the day of Qiyamah. I think what he's saying, review it in the light of your scriptures. Consider it again. They looked at the scripture that the prophesied man is to come. Examine him. Look at his qualities. Look at his attributes. The very ones that came to oppose came kneeling and accepted the kalimah. More than 70 in this delegation, 40 from Najran, a substantial amount of Jews, then the king of, of, of Abyssinia, Abdullah bin Salam, were those people that the Quran has praised them, Allah has spoken about them, that they had the Torah and the Injil. But when truth came before them, they accepted the truth, and they understood the truth, and they implemented the truth. The concluding hadith with which I terminate, much time has been taken. Brothers, I have spoken about this in detail during the week. I don't want to take much time and, and digress. Many things have been said. There's a lot of emotions. Emotions are running high. Sentiments are affected. People are emotional about the situation. Everything in its place. People are speaking of boycotting, uh, you know, Israeli products. I conclude with one hadith of Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this regard. If the atrocities and the brutality of the Yahud has opened our eyes to the concept and to the fact that they are enemies of truth, and they hate us dating from the very beginning of time and it has made us conscious which has resulted in us abandoning them and disassociating be it economically, be it financially, in any way and every way then Alhamdulillah what is happening in the Middle East the Ummah in other parts of the world has understood the message the Ummah is progressing, the Ummah has got the message but if so many lives are going thousands our children, orphans, our mothers, widows and the message has not been understood. Boycotting Israeli products is but one fraction of what Allah has told us. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam has prophesied in the riwayat of Tirmidhi Sharif. You will follow the nations that preceded you to such a detail that even if they entered a lizard hole, you will follow them. Sahaba said, O Nabi of Allah, do you mean we will follow the Jews and the Christians? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, if not them, then who else? If not them, then who else? So all the wrongs that took place among them will happen amongst you. وَلَا تَرْكَنُوا إِلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا وَلَن تَرْضَى عَنْكَ الْيَهُودِ وَلَن نَصَارَى حَتَّى تَتَّبِعَ مِلَّتَهُمْ Allah says, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, your enmity... Those that accepted the truth, Abdullah bin Salam studied the books of hadith. He has narrated so much ahadith. He came and he accepted the truth after studying that the truth was discussed in the Torah. Aminu bihi awlatu aminu. Allah says those that received the books previously, when they seen the truth, they accepted it. Allah says there's one way that the Yahud and the Nasara and the entire world will become happy with you. What is it? Walan tarda anka al-Yahud, walan Nasara hatta tattabi amillatahum. Allah says, you abandon your deen and start accepting their concept of wrong and evil and falsehood and trinity and they will accept you. But of course our message to the Jews and the Christians and to the entire world and we, and we, and we, we address our brothers in Palestine that may Allah help them and guide them and protect them. That in al mamat we will opt for dying and we will give our lives as you are giving it. We stand by your side in the form of dua, in the form of contribution, in the form of supplication, in the form of whatever possible way that we can speak against it. We will prefer dying than abandoning our deen, as our brothers and sisters have resisted in various parts of the world and preserved the deen. And they have showed the remaining part of the Muslim world that understand the price of preserving deen in this time is expensive. The doors of excuses are shut for you on the day of Qiyamah. If you will say that, oh Allah, I could not get up because of fear, Allah will tell you your brother in the other side of the world was going to read namaz in the third haram when it meant wearing his kafan and going. What are you fussing about that you worried about one thief that is going to come and attack you when you come for fajr? The doors of excuses have been shut. 
The price that the other brothers and sisters are playing in other parts of the world. Brothers understand what is the message. One is the brutality. And we look at that sympathy. That is emotions. But isn't there some other, some other spiritual note that it is passing to the entire world. And that is our ummah. We died for the deen of Allah. It's time you stand up in the entire ummah. May Allah unite the ummah. May Allah return puts in the lands of the ummah. May Allah give victory to the ummah. May Allah endow us, favor us, strength, show us the guidance. And that he died that he had promised with, the, with those that obey the deen of Allah. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.